welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael and this is going to be part two of my 100 wand collection. So let's dive right back in. So now we're going to go to, I guess, the good adults. Uh, so the first one here, as we're working our way through, is going to be Professor Flitwick's wand. Uh, this was going to be his second design. His design was changed in um, The Prisoner of Azkaban when he was, like, technically the music teacher. I don't think he was actually cast as Professor Flitwick um, when he was directing the Frog Choir. So his original design was kind of lost. I think it got adapted into Fudge's wand. Um, you can see Fudge's wand when he's using Sonorous on himself at the Quidditch World Cup and it looks very similar. It's got kind of the um, a little ball at the end or in the middle that's part of um, Flitwick's original one that you can see in the Sorcerer's Stone movie. So maybe they just grabbed it and used it for him. But anyway, um, this is the one that Flitwick uses for the remainder of the series. So interesting kind of flat design there. Um, very cool. Very long, very long for such a short man. Uh, so there we have Professor Flitwick. And then we have Professor Sprout. Uh, Professor Sprout, a very not, uh, natural looking wooden handle. Um, this one was gifted to me by my friend Jessie. Uh, she gave this to me when, uh, she's one of my good high school best friends and uh, she gave this to me for my birthday. Um, so very nice natural color there. I don't, no she does, she uses her wand in um, Chamber of Secrets. She taps the pots uh, to get everybody's attention. So she must use this in Chamber of Secrets, but she must have continued using it throughout the rest of the series. I don't, I don't, I don't think we ever see her cast another spell for the remainder of the series, um, but she must have had it in Deathly Hallows Part 2 at some point, I guess. Uh, so another good one. Keeping with the uh, theme of wands that my friend Jessie gave me, this is another professor that she gifted me, and so this is Professor Trelawney's wand. Um, lots of swirly unicorn horn light design, and then um, runes that are very similar to Sirius Black's wand. Um, this harkens back a lot to Sirius Black. Um, I, I, this is another wand that we never see in any of the movies, um, Deathly Hallows Part Two. Maybe there's a deleted scene or something with her like uh, uh, cat, like doing the tennis racket, like throwing the crystal balls at Death Eaters. I loved that in the books. I wish it had made it into the movies. Um, so maybe she had it at that point, but um, only time that we see this is gonna be if you buy it from a noble collection. Next, let's do some Weasleys. And so first we're gonna do Mrs. Weasley's wand. This one was a Christmas present from Haley also. Super simple, I love it. I think it fits Mrs. Weasley so perfectly because it's got that wood grain going on. Very simple handle, no nonsense, no time for any shenanigans. Uh, Mrs. Weasley doesn't have time for that. Uh, so I can totally see this just sticking out of her apron and uh, ready to uh, do a five minute feast or to, you know, send a howler or something, you know. She's, you never know what you're gonna get with Mrs. Weasley. Uh, so love her wand a lot. And then hers pairs very well with Mr. Weasley's wand. Um, so great handle. This is one of my favorite handles just because it's so long. It's got tons of hand space for you. Uh, nice little knob there to, to grab onto. And then um, it's, it's one, I think it's one of the longest. Um, Hermione's um, and the Elder Wand are quite long also. And Mr. Weasley's is one of the longest wands out there. Um, so they go very well together. So nice little couple pair there. And then we have Bill Weasley's wand. Um, so this was a, a gift from a friend of mine, Robbie, who's a um, very <laughs> extensive wand collector also. We uh, message a lot on Instagram and he actually owns every single Noble Collection wand. I'm trying to get to his, I'm still missing 12. And then when um, Hagrid's umbrella comes out later this year, I'll be missing 13. Uh, so I was very grateful that he was kind enough to send this to me for my birthday, but I like Bill's a lot. It's kind of similar to Ron's where it's got kind of this, um, this kind of knobby handle there. Um, um, very natural wood looking design. Um, so that'll wrap up the Weasleys. So we should do some Order the Phoenix members now. So we should do some Order the Phoenix members now. This is going to be Moody's second wand design, the one that we never actually see in the movies, but this is the one that's sold from the Noble Collection. Um, so much bigger, fatter version of the other Moody wand. I talk a lot about the different Moody designs in my other videos, so be sure to check that out. Um, but this is the one that you can actually still purchase. So big, hefty wand. Next, let's do Kingsley Shacklebolt's wand, one of the coolest designs, if really weird. I wish I knew kind of exactly what this was based off of. I don't know what kind of plant or root the handle of his, but it's got this big gap in it, which I think is really fun. Uh, and just this weird like organ, it looks like a like a heart or something uh, that's coming out of the, the base of his wand. So uh, one of my favorite designs, just because it's so unusual, but that's Kingsley Shacklebolt, the future minister of magic. Another really good one in the design department 
assortment is going to be Nymphadora Tonks' wand. This is one that I also bought in the parks, um, which was more expensive than Noble Collection ones, but you know, whatever. Uh, so bought this in the parks, um, got that great pitcher plant design to it. Um, a lot of people have, uh, have commented on like how you're supposed to hold hers, whether it's here. I like to hold it there. Just kind of, I don't know why, why does it matter? But I think it fits the, well there. Um, so nice little design there. But very unique, very different compared to all the other ones. And then maybe not one of the best characters, but definitely one of the funnest wands is going to be Madungus Fletcher's wand. And so um, Haley has a head theory that um, Madungus stole this wand because it's so opulent looking. Like it's got this crazy like lion design in the base. Um, it looks like, like kind of stolen off of a rich wizard, like a big signet ring or something. And so I totally buy that. I totally think that he stole this from like some kind of like pure blood wizarding family's tomb or something uh, and uses it as his own wand. So I like that theory a lot. Then some other ones that are just fun. Uh, so this is going to be Xenophilius Love Goods wand, another wand that's never seen in any of the movies. Um, very big unicorn thing, or maybe he'd say it's a rumpet horn. I'm not sure. It's got some runes down there in the bottom, kind of snuck in there. Um, this one I got at the Platform 9 and 3 quarters shop in London. Um, and brought it back over here. So um, very twirly, very fun wand. I think it suits him really well, especially kind of like the lighter color. I just think it, you know, it just reads in Ophelia's. And then we have the wand maker Gregorovich's wand. And so his is one that's never seen in the movies. Um, very natural, woody, rudy design there with two lines of runes going down either side. Um, looks like something you just pick up and then carve some runes into. Um, but it's got a nice kind of wrap around there with the gap there, so um, good one there. So now let's go into some bad guy wands. Uh, these are all the ones that I like to pick from when I do my Death Eater cosplay. I'm like, which baddie wand am I going to use this time? Uh, it's usually, this is the one I usually go to, which is the Death Eater snake wand. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty obvious if you're gonna be somebody at Ollivander <laughs> getting a wand made for you, uh, this is a pretty big indication that you're gonna end up a bad guy because it has like an actual skeleton on it and a big snake and it's just a big snake. Uh, but very good, very, very fun to uh, play around Death Eater wise with. So Death Eater snake. This is the Death Eater thorn wand. So this one has a pretty interesting story. Um, I had this one on a display over my fireplace and I knocked the display or I dropped this wand or something and it shattered into like five pieces and I was devastated. I was so sad. I was like, oh my God, I ruined a wand. Um, so if you look very closely, you can see that there are lots of uh, uh, super glue seams on this one. I don't take this one out anymore. This one doesn't come with me to conventions or anywhere else because it's, it's she, she's fragile. Um, but it's still one of the coolest designs because of all these thorns coming out of there. Um, very wicked. Uh, the, the handle's very unique with these kind of cutouts there. Um, and it's very comfortable to hold also, so. Treat, treat your wands with care. It says on every box that this is not a toy, uh, and they're right because they'll break everywhere. This is Yaxley's wand. Um, kind of, uh, there's a pretty much a theme. I don't have a lot of the like pious thickness. I'm missing his wand currently. There's a couple other wands that I that kind of all have a theme of like this kind of handle, then metal bit, then shaft. Um, so his is one in that that kind of theme, and so Yaxley's is just uh, straight black, and um, it's got a bit of a bend to it. Unfortunately, some of these. I've kind of got that, but um, yeah, so that's Yaxley's wand. Excuse me. So next we have the Caro wand. Um, I'm not, there's probably documentation somewhere that says whether this is a missus or a lecto, but um, it just, it's just sold as the Caro wand, so it's one of them. Um, it's got kind of these three different twisties going on. One's got like some thorns on it. Um, one's just flat and one looks woody. And so pretty unique design. And then um, the chef coming out, so. Um, they were pretty despicable characters, but it's a cool wand. Next is the Death Eater Skull Wand. This is another one that gets pulled out whenever I do my Death Eater cosplay, so pretty wicked looking. Um, it is a skull, and it's got this really kind of stony looking chopped up wood shaft going on. Um, this is a, uh, this is another design that was used a lot in the park ones. I don't know why they went with this one. I guess they were going for like, I'm a Slytherin, I'm dark, um, and people would like that one. So anyway, and I got the Death Eater skull at um, the WB Studio Tour in London. So that's where this one came from. 
since I got that one at the WB tour, um, the box that it came in is actually gonna be different from the other ones. And so um, this is just, it's gonna have that. So Death Eater, can you see? Yeah, Death Eater there. Um, and then on the underside, it actually has the um, Making of Harry Potter um, logo rather than the one that you'll get in Universal Orlando which has the um, Universal Orlando logo. And so that's how you can tell that you've gotten ones at different places. Like if you're buying things on eBay and people are saying it's sold here, it's sold there, um, you can tell pretty quickly right away where it was bought because it's gonna have that logo on the bottom telling you where this was purchased. So even though they're gonna use the exact same molds and the exact same paint job to make all these ones, where you buy it is, is gonna be different. Next is the Death Eater Swirl. Um, this one doesn't look very Death Eatery. It looks pretty normal to me. I think you could use this for just about any kind of wizard and it's got some swirls um pretty much the description of all the death eater wands is just like what it looks like rather than like these belong to specific characters um it's very possible that they do belong to specific characters um but maybe they just like death eater skull death eater swirl death eater thorn um they're they're just descriptors um so that's really all you have to go based off Speaking of which, this is the Death Eater Swirl. And so um, this was a graduation present from my parents when I graduated undergrad. They took me out to dinner, uh, took me and Haley and all of us out to dinner and they gave me uh, another wand. And they said, like, do, do you still like wands? Like, is this still cool for you? And I was like, yes, give me all the wands. I want all of them. Uh, so this is from my parents. So Death Eater Swirl. So super creepy, super delicate. I don't take this one out to cons either because I can just see all of those snapping off. Um, so pretty fancy these Death Eaters, but I wonder if all of them just had like their wands redesigned whenever they became Death Eaters. Like, oh yeah, I wanna be dark and scary, so I need like a weird skull, <laughs> dark mark wand. So uh, that one's fun. And then the last one in the like Death Eater description kind of collection is the Death Eater Stallion. And so um, it's got a horse top there, and then some kind of Bellatrixy style swirlies going down. Um, to the point and so a nice curve there. Um, this one sometimes comes out for Death Eater um, to go in my kind of my Death Eater sheath that I've got so um, I like the shape of that one. It's very comfortable to hold. And then this one is Frenrir Greyback. So not quite a Death Eater. I don't think it ever became official but this is his wand so quite a big handle. Um, a couple of bands there, round bottom. Um, pretty straightforward. It's kind of a, like a marbling going on there. So kind of like Seamus Finnegan's where it kind of looks like a, like a marble or a marble column or something. So there's Finrear. Then we have Bellatrix Lestrange's second wand. And so I'm gonna show you her first one when we get to the wand displays, but um, this is her second wand. And so um, Harry, Hermione, and Ron took her first wand whenever they were escaping from, um, from a Malfoy Manor. And so with this, she had to get another one made. And so this is the one she uses in Deathly Hallows Part Two. Very long, um, very tiny little handle, but it's kind of reminiscent back to her um, her first wand where it's just kind of like this kind of dark gray and black coloring. Um, and so this is the one that she uses when she's dueling Molly Weasley. Then we have Grindelwald's original wand. And so Grindelwald is getting a whole backstory now with the um, Fantastic Beast films but um, this was the one that he had before he had the Elder Wand. And so like a very thin, very thin wand. Um, it's got these uh, these thorns poking out of it. Um, it it's, I don't even know how it would have a core uh, because there's really no room anywhere. It must be like sunken in somewhere. Um, but this is the one he had when he was growing up, um, when he and Dumbledore were making their plans for world domination and all of that. Um, so I really like having this one in the collection too, because it's it's very unique compared to all the other ones. Very different. It's probably a Grigorovich design, I'm guessing. And then the last of my slip box wands is the one with the most interesting story. And so this is the Snatcher wand. Um, so another one with a very different design compared to the other ones. So this is the wand, the extra wand that Ron had. That was a hard sentence to say. Extra wand that Ron had in his bag in Deathly Hallows Part 1 um, that he gave to Harry after um, he returned to the camp. And so this was a one that Ron got off of the Snatchers and just happened to have with him. So when I went to the uh, Noble Collection store in London, 
I, I wanted to get this one just because it's really different and it wasn't in my collection yet. And so um, on the displays, you can see pictures of the store. You can see displays where um, they have each of the ones out with a little plaque and this one was labeled Snatcher. And so I'm like, okay, cool. So I went to the associate um, and say, hey, I'm looking for the Snatcher wand. And so he started looking and he was pulling through all the drawers and looking and looking and couldn't find it and couldn't find it. And I was like, oh, is it sold out? And I, I wouldn't think that this one would be very popular compared to like Harry and Hermione. He's like, no, no, we definitely have it. I, I just need to keep looking. And then he brought an associate over and then they both started looking. And it turns out the wand is incorrectly labeled. This wand is labeled, if you can see with the light, Harry Potter's broken wand. That is completely incorrect. I get it. I get where they're going for here. So I've got one of the extra Harry's here. So uh, we've got Harry's wand here. We've got the Snatcher wand. I mean, I can see how the mistake would be made. Um, how somebody maybe not super familiar uh, with all of the wands um, would, would label it this way. But um, this is not Harry's broken wand. Harry's wand does get broken, but that's not what this is. This is the Snatcher wand. And so they finally found it, Harry's broken wand. And then that's what I got. And so even the clippy on this inside still reads Harry Potter's broken wand. Um, but that's not what this is. This is definitely not Harry Potter's broken wand. This is the Snatcher wand. And so that, I think that's, I just think it's really funny, uh, because not, not that it was funny that the person was like struggling to help to, to find it, but just that it's incorrectly labeled. That's not what this wand is. Um, even though it was correctly labeled on their displays and I believe it's correctly labeled on their website. Um, it's called the Snatcher wand. Um, whenever this wand came out, which you can tell when it came out because it's going to have like the S, um, the, the trademark on there. So this one says S16. So that means that this wand came out uh, or was made and produced in 2016. And so um, you can also see it. There's a, a, a Time Warner and WB logo on each of the licensed wands and it'll tell you what year it was made. So that's where you can tell like if you have an older or rarer wand, like if it was made back in 2004, 2005, um, that's going to be kind of one of the older ones compared to the newer ones. And so this one was from 2016. Uh, I just, I think it's a funny story. So this one's extra special to me. I think we're gonna cut it off for this video right here. Thanks for sticking out with me. Uh, keep the magic alive and we'll see you for part three. Bye.